And we noticed that there was some foundation movement in the house not too long after we had finished the addition. I saw a crack in the wall or something. I can't remember exactly what it was. It may have been in the stone. It was a stone veneer on the, on the house. And we went out and, and I w- went out and walked around the perimeter. And there was a low spot in the soil around the foundation that I did not know about until I saw a puddle standing there. And I had my guys go throw some dirt on there and move, d- disperse the water. That, that was all we were trying to do was disperse the water so it wasn't standing there. And everything settled back into where it was supposed to be. And we never had another problem with that foundation. But that is what happens. So if you have standing water around the foundation, you need to, it's really important that you control where that goes. I actually have clients that hate gutters. I don't blame you. They're not the prettiest things in the world. They can be, they can be a part of the architecture of the house and they can work really well if designed in there properly and put properly. You know, a lot of gutters, they're not really pretty. They're just this piece of white aluminum that goes around the house. I don't blame people for not liking them, but not everybody, not everybody does, but you kind of need them around here because we get most of our rain in short periods. We get lots of it at one time and we need to control where it goes. So if you're walking around your house and you see this drip line, then you know either your gutters aren't working or of course, if you don't have gutters, then that water is going down and not con- you're not controlling where it goes and you're potentially creating some serious foundation issues and you need to fix that. So I've had a lot of experience with houses that have had some tremendous movement, and it's not always instant, it's over time. And over time is the real problem, because once it goes up, once it, once it heaves up and stuff settles underneath that foundation, it's really, really difficult to get it back where it needs to be. And you're essentially kind of dealing with it and trying to keep it from moving further. So once it's there, it's sort of there, and you and you want to try and mitigate that as much as you can. So a lot of that is moving, um, putting dirt where there's puddles to sort of displace water. Now, another problem that a lot of people have is they don't realize that when they do uh, plantings around their house, and they do gardens and ornamental beds, and they'll put little borders around them, and they'll build up the dirt, and they'll put, you know, little chips of, of, uh, of bark or whatever, and they look really nice, but they're kind of creating a little dam, and they're holding water, and that you need to create a way for that water to drain out. It's got to drain out properly, or again, you're creating, really you're creating that water area that I'm talking about. So make sure and and think about, think through those things. So again, we're going to go around the house, we're going to check everything and make sure water's going to drain back out. Look for debris. If you have just some old limbs laying around or piles of firewood, or if so, I see it all the time where I look at uh, around a house and I see things laying around and I go, well, that that's just created a dam and that's blocking water that's creating a problem for this foundation. A lot of times these things can be solved easily and cheaply without having to call a foundation guy. And uh, so we, you want to do that. So that's that's that item. We're going to take a short break and when we come back, we're going to continue this discussion. And then we're going to make a call to Richard Miller, and we're going to talk about the Dallas Builders Association Parade of Homes. And we're going to talk about Richard's house. We'll be back in a few.
Hey, travelers, do you want to save money on your next flight? Then pick up the phone and call. That's right, call, because the best prices are not online. They're with SmartFares. See, SmartFares has special deals with the airlines. When they have unsold seats, they use SmartFares to fill them. So you get airline tickets at ridiculously low prices. Our prices are too low to publish online. With the extra money you'll save, you can book another trip or treat yourself to dinner or shopping. So stop searching all of those travel sites to find the lowest price on your next flight. Let one of our SmartFares expert travel agents find ridiculously low prices for you. Call SmartFares today and get the best price on your next flight. Guaranteed. Also, save up to 50% off business and first class tickets. 800-871-3291. 800-871-3291. 800-871-3291. 800-871-3291. Again, that's 800-871-3291. Your grand remodeling starts from the ground up and for pennies on the dollar. Thanks to factory flooring liquidators. All building materials, including hardwood flooring, started at an incredible buck eighty nine, and it only gets better from there. Laminate flooring, 99 cents a square foot. Porcelain tiles, 39 cents. Need a new entryway? How about 60,000 exterior doors starting at 5 bucks a piece? Factory flooring liquidators, 1500 North Interstate 35E, Carrollton. Call 469-583-7053. Factory flooring liquidators, where you get the biggest deals all year round. They're three wide down the front straightaway, beating and banging on one another. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series drivers. Yeah, they're not at all worried about Brad Keselowski's feelings right now. Bump and grind on the Martinsville half mile. Side by side for the race lead. The STP 500. Team Penske and the Miller White Ford on their way to collect the grandfather clock. Sunday at noon on the Motor Racing Network. Don't miss the NASCAR STP 500 tomorrow at noon on 1160 AM KPVT. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. We are going over a few tips to do to prepare for the big storm. You know, you're lucky you're in Texas when the big storm is rain and you're on, you're on the east coast. The big storm is 19 inches of snow. Thank you, Lord. I would rather be wet than cold. I would rather be talking about when it warms up, I'm going skiing in the water instead of skiing on the mountain. <laughs> so uh, there's a couple of other things. I want to move on with this before I run out of time. Um, I want you to go around your house, and I want you to check for tree limbs that are hanging and dead. A lot of people don't really think about this, but you need to look up when you're checking around the house. Um, you know what happens is you have a storm come through, the lights go out, the phone goes out, the cable goes out. That's the worst part. And then you go outside and you look around and you realize that a tree or even a dead limb has fallen on your power line. And usually, or not always, but often, it's a dead one that was hanging there that you just didn't realize was going to go. It's a good idea to take a walk around the yard and look for that thing first and get somebody to cut that out for you before it becomes a flying missile during a thunderstorm. Um, I actually had a real good friend of mine that um, put a picture on Facebook. I don't see he, that he's on our um, – I don't see that he's on our um, on here yet. He should be because I told him to come watch the show today on Facebook Live so I could give him some good advice. He needs it. Um, he, um, we need to check these things. This this tree landed on his fence. Poor thing, little white fence. You know, some guys have a little white fence around their house. I don't, but. Um, if you'll check these things, then you can really you can really mitigate a whole lot of damage to your house. Also, the next item on my list is secure patio furniture. This is actually also on the FEMA website. Um, patio furniture in a 60 or 80 mile an hour wind becomes like a flying object and could end up in the neighbor's yard. Now, how you know? Possession is 90% of the law. So if your favorite patio chair ends up next door, 
then you got to negotiate to get it back. Or what if it's in his pool? That's no fun. Um, okay, we're going to take a quick break, and we finally got uh, Richard on the phone, and we're going to get Mr. Miller on the phone. And hello, Mr. Miller, how are you? Hey, doing good. How are you? How are you today? Man, I'm fantastic. Or uh, I got to tour your house the other day, and it is absolutely beautiful. Awesome. Thanks. Glad you got to take a look at it. I I, I was really glad, and um. So tell us about your experience uh, for the Parade of Homes, and you're going to be, is this your first parade tour? Yeah, this is uh, this is my first uh, parade uh, tour house. The Dallas Builders Association, you know, ask uh, some of us that are members to, uh, you know, submit projects for consideration for the tour, and uh, I was lucky to show fortunate that, uh, that this house was selected, so we're we're really excited about it. I saw the pictures of it on the uh, the. I guess they have a website for the parade, or it was a uh, yeah. Facebook page. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, it's uh, it's Parade of Homes Dallas dot com, and uh, that's where you can get information about uh, the parade and buy tickets as well online. And they have profiles of the houses and the builders, and it your house just really shines. It is so beautiful. The uh, drive up is beautiful, and the way you explained to me how you built it on the side of the creek over there by White Rock Lake is just stunning. Yeah, it's it's a really unique house. It's a when you when you come up to the entry, uh, we actually built the house into the side of a hill, so we. We actually uh, we actually cut the side of the hill out and built the house into the side of the hill overlooking the creek. So when you drive up to the house, the entrance door you see is actually the second level of the house. So I mean, it's it's definitely one that you that you have to see, and it was a it was a really really cool and fun construction project. So when you when you walked up and you you look through the house, you're actually you know, you're actually there's actually like two levels below what you're seeing. And when we walked in, we walked down a level, I think one level, maybe two, I can't remember. And then you're at kind of still above the creek. It was really amazing. There was ducks on the creek. I felt like I was out in the country. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a it's a it, it's a really it's a really cool house, and it's a lot of fun to uh, it's a lot of fun to tour the the uh, you know so. We cut it into the side of the hill, and then we cantilevered the back porch, which runs all the way across the back of the house, actually hangs over the creek off of the house. So it's uh, it was a whole lot of fun to build. Now, you have some other interesting uh, kind of bling-bling on the house. You have retractable screens and, and some other things. Tell us about some of the other things you're doing. Sure. We've got full uh, full Lutron home automation throughout the house. Uh, we've got in the master. We've got uh, automatic uh of course, automatic blinds. They, they've got big, big windows, so the, the homeowners can control uh, control access to that easily. We've also got um, some passive cooling, so the homeowners like to leave uh, doors and windows open when they can. So one of the things we did uh, on the back porch is we put in some retracting mosquito screens that retract all the way up into the wall. You can't see them, uh, but if you wanted to leave the big back slider open, you could do that. Still have access to the back porch and still get uh, all the the uh, airflow through the house without having uh, you know mosquitoes and bugs and stuff. That's awesome. Now tell me about this. Uh, I know you're not going to be able to have this on the tour, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. I'm putting you on the spot. You're doing okay. a, you're doing just this really cool wine vault. I call it a wine mm-hmm. vault, a wine room whatever you want to yeah. call it. Tell us uh, as well as you can, because I know it's not going to be ready, about this wine vault that you're doing. Sure. It, it is a, it, it's a really neat uh, wine basement, actually, and we uh, poured it. Uh, it was the first thing we poured in the house, and then we, and then we poured the foundation around it. But the way it works is uh, you walk into the kitchen, and you will actually walk over glass and look down into the wine room. It's got a uh, it's got a, a door on it that uh, it, it automatically raises, 
um, with the linear actuator uh, and a spiral staircase to access it. But when that is closed, you'll actually walk over a glass top Walking into the kitchen, you'll look down and you'll see uh, wine on the wall downstairs. So, you know, for some of us, you would you would want a motion sensor because every time you walked in there, you just want that door to open. You go straight down to the wine cellar because there's nowhere right. else to go. <laughs> there's nowhere else to go. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I mean, what's the point? Um, so this is April the 7th. And what are the yep, hours that you're going to have the house open? Yeah, it's April the 7th. It's from 10 to 5. Um, you can get your tickets. Uh, you, you can grab your tickets online, or you can grab them uh, at uh, my, my house. is going to be one of the houses that's selling tickets. So just come get them uh, online or the day of. And uh, I'll be there all day giving tours. So please come by, say hi, ask questions, um, and uh, we We'd love to see you. I really appreciate you taking the time for me today. And I will be broadcasting live from one of the houses. I think maybe your house. I'm not 100% sure yet. We're still making that decision. But I really, really appreciate you taking the time to be on the show. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me on. Thank you so much. And tell everybody how to get hold of you. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's uh, Richard Miller Custom Homes. Just go to modernmiller.com, modernmiller.com, or you can uh, call me directly at 972-800-3169. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. You too. Bye-bye. Okay, buddy. Thank you. That's Richard Miller, and we were we are going to have a really uh, fun time. I'm really looking forward to being broadcasting live from the Dallas Builders Association Parade of Homes. They haven't done one in about 10 years. I'm, I was really honored that they asked me to do it. They are one of my sponsors, um, but that doesn't matter. They still asked me to do it, and I'm still honored by that. And it's going to be a, a just a, a great time. They put on great parades. Uh, great home parades. Um, so we have a few more minutes uh, in this segment, and I wanted to uh, continue on, continue on with our discussion about s- these storms. Um, one of the things that I wanted to move on to that's a little different than I had been talking about in the past is thunderstorms, because we're getting into the time of year when we have a whole lot of lightning and a lot of severe type storms. And you can be having just kind of a regular old rainstorm. You hear a little thunder on the horizon. You see a little lightning. And then all of a sudden, you end up in some kind of a really nasty thunderstorm coming over your head. And you may not be in the right place to protect yourself. Here's a couple of things I read. Actually, I read this on FEMA, and I thought it was it sounded, you know, it could be kind of funny, but it's not. Um, rubber boots aren't any protection from lightning if you're out in the open. Well, I, I know that sounds kind of silly, but there are people that don't understand that, of course, the lightning <laughs> strikes you above the ground. But the inside of a car is as long as you don't touch the metal. So the lightning would strike the roof of a car. So if you're out in a thunderstorm, not obviously a tornado, you don't, the, the ideal place is not to be in a, in a vehicle if there's a tornado or a real strong wind. But if it's a lightning storm, you can jump in a car and you're safe from lightning pretty much because lightning would hit the roof and the car is grounded. Do not touch the metal. Also, thunderstorms and lightning storms, it is a great investment to buy a battery backup and surge protector for your home electronics. Now, I've done this recently. If you think about it, most of us have huge dollars invested in our home electronics, and I know this, if lightning hits my house, burns up my electronics, and my other half has no TV, 
if she has no DVR, if she has no iPad, if the internet goes out, I'm a dead man. If she finds out that it could have not been, if it, if I could have saved all that with a with a battery backup, you mean all you had to do was buy a battery backup? Why didn't you do it? Well, honey, I forgot. You're a dead man. You die. <laughs> J.D. Wells is shaking his head because he understands the problem that I'm bringing up. Yes, yes, this is true. This, my friend, is true. The wedding band. The wedding band rules, and so does the wife. So make sure that these are things that you, these are things that we do, we do control. We do control them. Now, there's one other thing as far as uh, our, uh, controlling these uh, search protectors we can do whole house search protectors and i put these on lots of houses i always recommend them to my clients if they don't already have them they're not expensive they're a few hundred dollars they're for an electrician has to install them they'll go on your uh, uh, panel your electric panel in your garage and it's a whole house search protector and this thing does several things it'll protect your entire house if there's a big surge in the power. In other words, if lightning strikes a power pole or if there's a sudden jolt in the surge and what happens is, you know, you'll, you'll be, all of a sudden your lights will get real bright or get real dim and that'll be maybe a transformer blowing a couple blocks away or something weird happens. You'll be glad you've got one of these guys because this will kind of keep everything from melting down. It's a whole house surge protector. It's a couple of hundred bucks. It's a couple of hundred bucks for the electrician to install it, and it will save you thousands. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, i got a couple of emails this week, and we're going to read them. Because there are some people around this town that need some really good advice. And I'm here to give it. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Your Home with Alex Guthrie. Stay tuned. So every time you look out your windows, the world looks a little foggy. Does it sound like the crickets are in the house? You need to keep the outside out and the inside in. Alex Guthrie here for my friends Window Traditions, where I buy Sierra Pacific windows. You want a fully transferable glass warranty? Sierra Pacific windows has it. You want the highest quality sun protection? Sierra Pacific windows offers it. Family owned for four generations, Sierra Pacific Windows is here to stay. And not just anybody gets my business when it comes to windows and doors. That's why I call Window Traditions for sales and installation. 214-357-3100. That's 214-357-3100. Sierra Pacific Windows and Window Traditions. 214-357-3100. Or visit their website at wtraditions.com for the very best view of the Lone Star State. 1160 AM KBDT proudly presents this historic salute to Grapevine, Texas, brought to you by Grapevine Antique Market. In 1866, the Grapevine Masonic Lodge is organized. J.W. Dunn is the first worshipful master. In 1867, they decide to build a school. Pine lumber is hauled by ox teams over 150 miles from the mills in East Texas. School begins in September of 1869. Colonel W.P. Bishop is principal. The school remains open until 1886. Hi, I'm Brandon Cantrell with Grapevine Antique Market. We sell vintage items, antiques, 
and a lot of current decorative items. Very cool. My husband lived here when I got married 33 years ago. It's a small town feeling, although it's not that small anymore. I've just gotten to know Grapevine, and I have lots of friends here, and I like it. Grapevine, Texas, a world festival and event city. Find out more about Grapevine by going to www.grapevinetexas.gov. Step back in time. Visit Historic Grapevine, Texas today. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies. I've had 10 major surgeries, including three brain surgeries. And I have extreme rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and fibromyalgia. And I wanted to let him know that his balance of nature have helped boost my immune system um, so much because I'm on injectable medications for the rheumatoid and they mm-hmm. run your immune system. Since I've been taking balance of nature, I haven't gotten a cold, nothing. It really helped me tremendously. Good health is only a phone call away. What are you waiting for? Don't miss your opportunity to get a free month's supply of Balance of Nature. Call 1-800-2468-751. That's 1-800-2468-751. Or go online to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code USA. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. This segment is brought to you by Total Air and Heat. We're not comfortable until you are. Total Air and Heat, www.totalair.com. 866-450-0602. Give my friends at Total Air and Heat a call. They are the best. I only hang out with the top guys. I got a couple of emails. I've been dealing with this a lot lately with my clients. This is from Dan. What is a good tip for cleaning granite? My husband is a particular is particular about it, and I never knew until he had it installed. You know, that's a funny thing, Dan, because husbands are like that. Sometimes, well, wives are too. Sometimes we don't find these things out until after we've gone through a remodel with them. And uh, I must tell you that there's a lot of things we learn about each other when we put each other through these uh, little things through our marriage and we learn about things like, uh, wow, I never knew that you really cared about how clean the countertops were until it was your personal countertop. Well, I'm going to tell you about Granite. I just had a a countertop, and the husband kept texting me saying, how do I get this black granite countertop clean? Or, you know, does it matter what I use to clean it? And I said, nah, man, it's black granite. You can't do anything to that. Well, I got to be a little careful with that because you want to use something with – that doesn't have a high that that's a non-acidic cleaner on granite because of the sealers that are in it and you don't want to use anything that'll that'll actually take the sealer off because then things can penetrate into that granite so there is a uh product that the that's called barkeeper's friend and we actually had this problem with this granite where it just wasn't quite as good as we wanted it to be the homeowner wasn't 100 percent happy with it i wasn't and i could scrub it all day long and couldn't get it out and actually my granite lady who is wonderful stephanie gamble i hope you're listening today she came out and she brought some barkeepers friend and she worked on that thing for a little bit and it just made it absolutely beautiful So, so try barkeepers friend and then try on some of them, you can use soft scrub. Um, just kind of read the label and make sure that whatever you're whatever you're, you're planning on using is non-acidic and tells you on the label that it's safe on granite. And again, it's the sealers that we're we're trying to protect there. Um, also, I got another um, email from Pam. 
Are glass treatments safe for your shower after the installation? Now, I think that I may have accidentally read this one last week or week before. Uh, she may have sent it to me twice, or it may have still been in my inbox, but I'll, we'll go through it again. It says, we have a big shower enclosure, and we can't keep it clean, and that's because of the water that we have, of course. It leaves little water spots on everything, and so there is, if you're ordering a large shower enclosure and you've got tons of glass there is no way to keep that stuff clean and getting it clean after you've used it that's really hard and it's not really for most of us very reasonable to think that you're going to take a squeegee after you take a shower every morning and squeegee the glass i know that's a popular thing to think and there may actually be somebody that does it it wouldn't be me that's for sure um there are some products that are on the market that you can actually apply to the glass and they will seal it. Now, if you have certain types of tile or natural stone in your shower, you want to be very careful about what you use on that glass because you don't want overspray of certain things getting on that natural stone. It can stain it or it can etch it. And so also you need to be very careful about VOCs. Uh, and that's just anything that smells really bad. You want to make sure that it's usually just for the time that you're applying it, but you want to be careful that you're not getting in that small space and you're breathing in fumes that are dangerous. Usually they'll dissipate. And usually if you have an exhaust fan, you can turn it on. But be very careful about what you put in there. There are treatments. If you're talking to your contractor or your glass contractor, there are treatments they can do in the factory. They're not real expensive. They have 10-year warranties. Um, the ones you do at home will have a three-year warranty on most of them, the ones that we're using. And so you can you can actually uh, get a good they're, – they're supposed to be really good and they'll help you keep that glass clean and the water just kind of beads right off before it has a chance to stain it. So yes, there are some really good things that you can use. Um, we're gonna take a break in a few minutes. I have one more short thought that just got right away from me. <laughs> So we're gonna we're not gonna have to bother with it because we're at the top of the hour. And we've only got like twenty seconds to work taking our five minute break. We'll be back in just a few minutes. More of your home with Alex Guthrie. Don't go away.
I'm John Clemens. Craigslist shuts down its personal section in light of the congressional bill on trafficking. Ads seeking romance or sexual connections no longer going to be available on the Craigslist U.S. site. The company making the change after Congress passes the Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act. As Craigslist wrote, the law seeks to subject websites to criminal and civil liability when third parties misuse online personals unlawfully. This is USA Radio News. Everyone loves liberty, so why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Stop letting others tell you what to do. Call us at 855-58-LIBERTY for more information or check us out online at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. Facebook is facing increased scrutiny and stock losses after accounts of a massive data breach and manipulating elections and user news feeds to fit political narratives. Christopher Wiley, a former employee of Cambridge Analytica, the firm accused of the breach, played a role in that action and later told his story to journalists. Christopher Wiley, a former employee of Cambridge Analytica, the firm accused of the breach, played a role in that action and later told his story to journalists. Concerns are mounting about Facebook's ability to be exploited in order to spread propaganda, while experts have noted that Facebook's own struggles with promoting political narrative feeds has been troubling enough. Facebook chairs have fallen, and some users are contemplating deleting their accounts. I'm Jennifer Breeden. A Chinese satellite expected to come crashing back to Earth sometime next weekend, but experts can't say where or exactly when. Chris Barnes explains. With the nickname Heavenly Palace, the nine-ton satellite is expected to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere between March 30th and April 3rd. The European Space Agency says there's no way of pinpointing where that satellite's going to crash. However, USA Today reports that a federally funded analysis done by Aerospace Corporation predicts it lands south of Canada along a strip of the United States that could run anywhere between Northern California to Pennsylvania. For USA Radio News, I'm Chris Barnes. And an investigation continues into the blaze that took the life of a fireman at a Harlem brownstone on Thursday night. The fire breaking out in the basement, the location being used as a movie set. This is USA Radio News. Attention. Your home is your castle. Whether you need a pro or just great advice. Your home with Alex Guthrie. Welcome back to your home and hour number two. This is the hour of exploration. And I have two of the finest, two of the finest, two of my good friends, Mr. Duffy Frazier of Quality Insulation and Roofing. Are you a roofer? We'll hold off on that for now, okay. <laughs> and Eduardo Padilla of Platinum, uh, Platinum, Platinum and Turnkey Solutions. I'm sorry, I just know you as Platinum. I don't know the Turnkey Solutions part, although I wrote it down. How are you, sir? Pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. And you, sir? Just lovely. Okay, I'm not getting either. I'm not getting either one of them. Um, I think their mics are off. But JD's going to fix that for us. Okay. How about now? I'm here. There you are. There you are. Okay, Duff. Yes, sir. There he is. All right. We got you guys. All right. That's all right. Okay. And so I have. I want to see what's going on with, with both of you guys. How are you doing, Mr. Frazier? I'm cool in the gang. Cool in the gang, as always. As always. So quality insulation. You've been doing... You've been doing insulation like forever. Thirty-eight years. Thirty-eight years. Yes, sir. Is is that all? For now. Have you learned anything? You know anything about it? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Let's get you right up here a little bit. Okay. And uh, so you are. You and I had talked the other day when we were talking about doing this. You and I were talking about. You really like house wrap. Uh, I think it's a superior product for for huh, for you for the exterior. So when we're talking about building houses now, or really any structure, it could be commercial or residential, because we we see it on a lot of apartments. There's this green. When I look at them now, I see these green buildings with black. Looks like electrical tape over them, mm -hmm. over the seams. 
So when you're driving all around town, this is the stuff that you see. Now, I've been a little bit, uh, it's been a little tough for me to kind of jump on board with this. I'm not saying I don't like it or it's bad or an inferior product or anything. It's just taken me a few years to change because I'm a habitual creature. And I know the other, the tar paper that we put on houses last, has lasted, you know, a hundred years. So it's worked fine. But, and new products are fine. I don't have a problem with it. But it's the tape part that I have concerns about and the heat and whether or not when you tape joints in Texas heat and it gets 150 to, you know, 160 degrees on those walls during the summer, whether adhesives can hold. Now, may, I'm sure they've tested it, and I'm sure people will tell me that I'm crazy, but you don't, you, you kind of agree with me. You're, you have a lot more faith in the house wrap, which is what people will see Tyvek and various brands of house wrap, which is a, some sort of a paper or a fabric that's wrapping. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, they call it a building paper, but um, Tyvek is the best product. And what separates it from the green zip board that you're referring to is you uh, have the ability to overlap it, and you also um, have the ability to flash the windows correctly. So, so flashing the windows means sealing them so water doesn't get in. Correct. And and air or just water? Uh, absolutely. It's an air barrier, and it sheds bulk water, but okay. it allows water vapor to pass through it. And so what, we're, what are we trying to do with, with a vapor? Is it a vapor barrier? No. It's an air barrier. Air barrier. So what are we essentially trying to do with a with a house wrap? House wrap is you're you're trying to protect the exterior envelope of your house from from the weather. So it sheds bulk water, uh -huh. but it will not trap moisture. Uh huh. And uh, sorry, it's okay. I'm gonna work on this. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that better? Yeah. I'm gonna wear this guy out. <laughs> it's, just that, it, it's just that every time I get closer, get you closer to the microphone, so people can hear you. I start talking softer. <laughs> so it's like the closer the mic is, well, pretty just... soon it's gonna be inside one of your nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> just, just belt it out there. Well, yeah, come well on, I want them to be it. leaning in and really paying attention. Yeah, they're gonna know? have to. Okay. <laughs> well, if, if they're driving their car, they're gonna leave. So those of you watching, uh, JD Wells is uh, getting Duffy to talk. <laughs> Come on, Duffy. Let's right. have it, baby. Okay, so let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's talk vapor barrier. Yeah. Right. It, it's a it's a weather barrier. Okay. Okay. Not a vapor barrier. So it does not trap moisture. I, I keep calling it a vapor barrier because you know in the days that I came up in the building industry, that's what we called it. We called it a vapor barrier. We're always concerned with keeping moisture under control coming in walls because of mold. Exactly. And building science has opened our eyes to that in Climate Zone 3, which is North Texas. You do not want a vapor barrier. And so what is Climate Zone 3? That's that's the where we are in the United States. So we have zones. Different zones with different climate conditions, different right. moisture levels. And okay cooling and heating days and things of that nature. And so we are right on the edge. If you look at that climate zone map, there's a line that runs right smack through the middle of Dallas-Fort Worth. And Fort Worth is sort of a arid, If you, it's colored, and Fort Worth is sort of arid, and Dallas is right on the edge. So Dallas is considered semi-arid, not really semi arid it's it's a it's a humid arid right it's weird it, dallas is kind of where you have as much humid uh, humid days as you do dry days exactly right and so it's kind of an odd duck so no vapor barriers you know 20 30 years ago it was a big thing to put plastic inside the house now when you're doing all these remodels they're finding all sorts of issues. Mold. Yeah. So now, 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 when you're remodeling a house built in the '80s, you call your attorney <laughs> when you remodel it, right? 
Yeah, When's the much. last time you put plastic up? So, so Eduardo's, Eduardo's the sheet rocker. Yes, I am. And so there was a time in the eighties when you would go in a house and the builder would say, okay, put that bisqueen up on all the walls, right? Yes. You, you would just go in and put clear plastic up, staple it over the, you'd insulate it. And then you'd put the clear plastic up before you had sheet rock. Yeah, we used to do like a, a right after the fiberglass. Sometimes it was like a four mil poly, mm -hmm. which you just staple to the studs. Right, and then even they used to use this uh, paper, like a roof uh, tar paper. Tar paper. Yeah, and then we were supposed to have the green board in that time. The green board that was very the green, popular. The green colored back sheet. In the day. Right, right. <laughs> now, and, and we were proud of that. We yeah, were, I mean, we, we, we were, was thinking that we was doing the right thing, right? We were proud of that. I remember telling people, I mean, I, I wasn't the contractor, so don't call me. <laughs> but I remember we were all really proud of the fact that we had, we would go, wow, we put plastic on those walls, yes. you know? It was like, look what we're doing for you. <laughs> yeah, now, now it's opposite. We're supposed to have, you know, all those walls breathe. Yeah. And, uh, and avoid that uh, that issue. That's right, exactly. And I have a client that's a, that's a trial attorney, and he said the first thing he did is he bought Joe Stebrick's book. And he and Joe Stebrick wrote the book on basically forensic home building, and uh, that disproved all of this this uh, how you we wrap a house on the inside and and all that type of thing and. Uh, he learned the right way before he started going after builders. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and so we had to actually just totally rethink all of this moisture wrapping and things like that. So you believe in the paper wrap. You like the wrap. And I've always liked the wrap as well. Yes. I mean, it. It performs better than this uh, green board that you're referring to. Mm -hmm. And um, for multiple reasons, you can overlap the seams and the tape that is used is... Um, the this, tape on the paper. The tape for, for the Tyvek, it's Tyvek tape. It's made by the scientists that made the Tyvek. Uh -huh. So they're making the tape to stick to their product. Right. So right. they know what they're doing. But, but, but regardless of the product name, <clears throat> we're just talking about... The, using a different type, we're using a, a, a wrap. Exactly. So it's continuous, mm -hmm. and when it's installed correctly, you're using cap nails, so they're self-sealing. Uh huh. Whereas with the green board, um, if they have too much pressure on the nail gun, then they're going to be breaking that membrane, mm -hmm. and then they lose their ability to be a air barrier and a weather barrier. I see. And I see. So you don't you don't have really any control over some parts of that you have more control because i guess the paper's hand nailed no it's not it's no. shot it okay. is mm -hmm. okay all right but it's it's cap nail so it seals a cap nail is a nail that's got a big red plastic yeah, it could be any cap color. on it right exactly okay it could be any color yeah but the one <laughs> <laughs> the ones i've seen are red okay <laughs> So you don't do so back in the day you would do a plastic you do plastic on the inside of the wall and then you would do green rock. Yeah, in that time uh on any shower top we used to have a four mil poly uh -huh. stapled to the studs and then we go with the green board or mm -hmm. sometimes there was the, the roof paper just to kind of create a uh, protection in right. that time. Right. Now the green board mm -hmm. even it's not well if they about see code. if they see green board then you they they problem. call the paddy wagon <laughs> but but and, and what I'm trying to put together for our audience is that when we create a wall and we're creating the environment inside the wall, then we're talking about the house wrap on the outside of the wall or whatever the material is, and then we have insulation in the cavity of the wall, and then on the inside of the wall, we used to have plastic. And essentially what we were doing was allowing moist air inside the wall, inside that insulation, and the plastic would trap it in there. Correct. And it started feeding on anything that was cellulose, which would be wood or the paper of the insulation or anything in there that 
mold could eat, it would Sorry. start eating, right? Yeah. Now, now the way the way we've been working lately on the last few years, uh, you know, the green board is not on code anymore. Now we have different products for tile, like uh, Hardy Backer, Cement Board. Uh, there are new products from USG called Aquatof, Fiber Rock. All those products are they great. <clears throat> GP has several good products like Dane Shield, Dane's Glass. Uh, for many years, we've been preferring using Hardy because it's a very friendly material. Uh, but lately, uh, on the last year and a half, we're, well, I'm sorry to interrupt you. What we're what we're you're discussing is like in a bathroom area. Yeah, exactly. In a, Just, wet, in a wet area. If if uh, if now it's going to be a, a a wet area like a shower or a tub, uh -huh. you're supposed to use some type of uh, cement product. That's uh, you are not allowed to use green board anymore. Now the, the the green board is 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 new. You know there there are new technologies now. National Gypsum USG they have good products called like uh, uh, XP product. That's the the paper is purple and that's with a moisture berry paper. Mm -hmm. We're still using that product now, but just for the remaining walls and ceilings of the bathroom, like the ceiling, the commode area, vanities. Mm -hmm. Areas where you have some type of a steam or exposure, but you can still use an, uh, you have to use the cement board for the tile where the shower is going to be running pretty much. Mm -hmm. And in that way, you don't want to get any water getting through the studs. You don't want, but at the same time, the wall is able to breathe in case mm -hmm. you need it, you know? Right, right. Well, we we finally figured out that air is good. We like air these days yeah. we didn't used to like air but now we like the right kind of air we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we're going to talk some phone with duffy the phone man <laughs> we're going to take a quick break you're listening to your home with alex guthrie don't go away we shall return Alex Guthrie here for my friends at Total Air and Heat. Did you know a typical AC unit runs enough hours in a year equal to a car running 60,000 miles? Total Air and Heat recommends that you tune your system and have it safety checked every six months to ensure peak efficiency, proper operation, and increase the life of the system. Need a new air conditioning and heating system? No problem. Total Air and Heat can replace your equipment with the best equipment on the market today. Train, and you know it's hard to stop a train. So for the best heating and air conditioning contractors in North Dallas and Plano for the past 60 years, call my friends at Total Air and Heat, 972-881-0020. That's 972-881-0020 or visit them online at TotalAir.com. Total Air and Heat. 1160 AM KBDT proudly presents this historic salute to Grapevine, Texas. Brought to you by Underwood Boot Company, 530 South Main Street. 1854 saw Grapevine's first genuine civic controversy. The postal route was being established. The town needed an official name. Leonard was considered named after A.F. Leonard, who served as the postmaster, justice of the peace, and the county representative in the 12th Texas legislature. When Judge Moorhead was asked, he said, Grapevine would be a good name for our town. And it still is. I'm Anthony Underwood, Underwood Boot Company. We got a lot of tourists, a lot of local business, a lot of foot traffic. Boots are custom. They're top notch. We make everything here. Jose, my bootmaker, has been doing it over 50 years. We put out a very high quality product. Grapevine, Texas, a world festival and event city. Find out more about Grapevine by going to www.grapevinetexas.gov. With this salute to Historic Grapevine, I'm Anthony Underwood, Underwood Boot Company. Step back in time. Visit Historic Grapevine, Texas today. Some people think the only thing worse than calling the dentist is calling the foundation repair man. That's why I recommend Hargrave Foundation Repair. Cracks in the walls? Doors that won't close? Give the folks at Hargrave Foundation a call. Now sometimes it's not the foundation at all. That's why you need an honest, proven company. You see, understanding the soils and weather is a must for a lifetime repair. Family owned and operated since 1968, Hargrave has seen it all. Hargrave Foundation Repair is 
fully licensed and insured, and their staff stays up to date on all the latest techniques and advances. So call one of the last independently owned foundation companies in North Texas and the exclusive installer of the Chance Helical Pier System. Call Hargrave Foundation Repair at 972-442-3415. That's 972-442-3415. Hargrave Foundation Repair, 972-442-3415. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. I'm here with my good friends Duffy Frazier and Eduardo Padilla. <laughs> I love that deep, wonderful Latino voice of yours. It's pretty amazing. Duffy is just this soft spoken man, but we're getting him through it. <laughs> so um we're talking insulation today we're talking house wrap and all things on the exterior of the house exterior walls and of course we when we talk exterior we've got to talk interior and the things in between and the thing in between that's going on right now more than anything or a lot i, I would say more than anything how much foam are you guys using in homes right now in walls let, let me put it to you in relationship to starts okay, okay? starts being new Be, new, new home new construction um most of the starts are with volume builders and apartments and they're not using any foam too expensive exactly uh -huh. so then you get into a certain price point and more times than not it will be foam uh-huh and so with bat, so they're using bat or blown in. What are they using? Um, uh, multifamily and volume builders, predominantly the fiberglass bats. The fiberglass bat, but are they using thicker walls? And they have to reach a certain R factor, right? Yeah, the code has uh, amped up the specification, so to speak, but it's the house as a whole, not just insulation. Right, 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 right. So right. Um, so you could use more in the attic right, and then like, a more efficient air conditioning system and better windows and blah, 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 so you could still use, okay. Right, it's like squeezing the balloon. Right, right. right. If you do this over here, then you don't have to do as much right. over here. I got you, and, I got uh, you. You know, continuous insulation on the outside is a big thing now. So your ceiling corners and you're kind of sealing the plates. You're, so everything, I mean, these are things that we've been doing for many years, but I think we do better now. Better and more extensive. Um, there's a top plate gasket that is uh, applied by the person that's doing the poly seal. Uh -huh. and, uh, so tell us what's poly seal. Poly seal is the foam caulk that goes around the penetrations of the envelope of the house, the exterior walls and anything that goes to the attic the uh so when the house is before it's before it's insulated correct they go in and they kind of where the where the walls are standing it's just studs at this point correct before they've sheet rock before they've insulated they go in and they kind of seal the top and the bottom the corners anywhere that insulation can't go yeah, right. around the windows, around the doors, uh -huh. uh, any penetration on the exterior walls. And that's what you do. Yes. That's what you guys do. Before you insulate, you go in and, and, and you call it, what do you call it, just poly? Just poly seal. Poly seal. And that's, that's part of your, uh, if you're a builder, you need to do that before your frame inspection on the new houses. In so, order to pass your frame inspection, uh -huh. you need to make sure you do your poly right. That that's more a combination, right, and between poly foam and, and regular caulking, correct, Duffy? Correct. So if I'm a if I'm the buyer, if I'm buying the house, I'm I'm the I'm the new I'm the homeowner, or I'm going to be the homeowner. Is there anything I need to look for? Do I need to walk through this thing before it's sheetrocked or before it's insulated? And do I need to worry about this stuff and look for something, or is this something that that I can just expect the inspector to pick up on or you guys to pick up on or is it something as a homeowner I should look for? Um, it's always best to have another set of eyes, especially if you're the one that's going to be paying the utility bills mm -hmm. owning the house. Um, before it gets 
called in to insulate, you can walk around and make sure nobody came in last minute and drilled any holes into the top plate. I'd like to run a security the top wire plates the, the, that the, goes to the, the attic. Right. The top plate is the at the top of the wall. Correct. And it's the horizontal two by four or yes. two by. Right. That's for any interior or mm -hmm. exterior wall. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want any penetrations going into an unconditioned area. Any ones that aren't sealed. That aren't sealed. Yeah, Correct. right, right, right. Of course. Yeah. Well, going right. to your question, uh, Alex, I think that the most important, if you're a new possible buyer of a new home, first of all, I think it's really important who's building your home, you know. Make sure that's a, a legit custom builder or production builder, but that's the whole credential of the Home Builder Association, reviews, things like that. Sometimes in these days, everybody can call a builder uh -huh. and they just go for the short run. You know, they always try to skip the city. Depending on the city, they do really good work with inspections. If, if you're really trying to skip something, you're going to get caught and you have to fix it. Right. But if you're spending a lot of money on the house, you're not an expert. You're just a homeowner. Sometimes you can hire a third party inspector and for a minimum fee, they can go and do nine inspections on your home. That's besides the city inspection, just to have a, it's like a third party energy inspector that we have uh, many of the cities mm -hmm. that require me. Because, you know, by the time you guys are there, everything's covered up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, by the time you're gone, I can't tell if it's been done right or not. And I don't know. I'm just a homeowner. What do I know? I got to trust you. Yeah. I got to trust the builder. And hope the inspector saw it before it got covered up. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to return and we're going to keep talking about foam and sheetrock. I got some really tough questions for Eduardo in that sheetrock. Sounds boring, but it's not. Hang tough. Don't go away. Well, you're home with Alex Guthrie. We'll return. USA Radio News with John DeMaster. Late Friday night, the Trump administration announcing that most transgender people will no longer be allowed to serve in the military. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders saying last Based year. Based on consultation that he's had with his national security team, uh, came to the conclusion that it erodes military readiness and unit cohesion and uh, made the decision based on that. The White House out with a memo saying transgenders present a considerable risk to military effectiveness. Meantime, busloads of students and others arrive in D.C. to participate in marches to call for gun control and school safety in response to recent school shootings across the country. Planned Parenthood, George Soros, MoveOn.org, helping fund March for Our Lives. There are similar events across the nation. Gun control being talked about in the Democratic Weekly Address. It's time to put American families and your safety first. It's time for common sense change. Democratic Representative Robin Kell of Illinois giving the address. This is USA Radio News. Hi, this is Wayne Allyn Root. I'm a father of four, and I worry every day about this dangerous world. There are so many things that could go wrong. Economic collapse, stock market crash, terrorist attack, war with North Korea. There's a lot to worry about when it comes to protecting your income, assets, and your family's future. Thankfully, my good friends at Tangible Investments are your safe haven from the storm. Call now, and Tangible Investments will send you absolutely free a one-ounce American Silver Eagle along with your guide for investing in precious metals. To receive your free American Silver Eagle, call toll-free 800-780-9000. That's 800-780-9000. The New York Times number one seller, Portraits of Courage by former President George W. Bush, is a vibrant collection of oil paintings and stories that honor the sacrifice and courage of America's military veterans. Available in a standard hardback edition, as well as a deluxe boxed edition signed by President Bush himself. Go to PatriotDepot.com backslash Portraits of Courage to get yours today. Use coupon code USA Radio to save 10% off your entire order. So every time you look out your windows, the world looks a little foggy. Does it sound like the crickets are in the house? You need to keep the outside out and the inside in. Alex Guthrie here for my friends, Window Traditions, where I buy Sierra Pacific windows. You want a fully transferable glass warranty? Sierra Pacific windows has it. You want the highest quality sun protection? Sierra Pacific windows offers it. Family owned for four generations? 
Sierra Pacific Windows is here to stay. And not just anybody gets my business when it comes to windows and doors. That's why I call Window Traditions for sales and installation. 214-357-3100. That's 214-357-3100. Sierra Pacific Windows and Window Traditions. 214-357-3100. Or visit their website at wtraditions.com for the very best view of the Lone Star State. You have to sell your gorgeous but suddenly unaffordable house. Now, who will buy it? These guys buy. You have to sell your mom and dad's old run-down house. Now, who will buy it? These guys buy. You have to sell your crazy Aunt Zelda's house. You know, the one with all the cats. These guys buy. Taj Mahal? These guys buy. Old Musty Dump? These guys buy. Just plain ugly? These guys buy. Sell your property now. As is. No fees, no repairs, no waiting. Theseguysbuy.com. 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 They're three wide down the front straightaway, beating and banging on one another. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series drivers. Yeah, they're not at all worried about Brad Keselowski's feelings right now. Bump and grind on the Martinsville half mile. Side by side for the race lead. The STP 500. Team Penske and the Miller White Ford on their way to collect the grandfather clock. Sunday at noon on the Motor Racing Network. Don't miss the NASCAR STP 500 tomorrow at noon on 1160 AM KPDT. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. That is such a groovy beat. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> I do. I'm here with my good friend Eduardo Vidia and Mr. Duffy Frazier, the coolest cat in town. He's a cool cat. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he knows all about the foam. He's foamy. So um, I wanted to ask you something. Have you ever put up paperless sheetrock yes by request uh by request only yeah uh in a few occasions it's been a, a request by the architect uh -huh. or the homeowner and uh, in that case we've been going with the uh, gp pros and how yeah. do you so paperless what they were trying to kind of get it, it it's sort of a green product yes and uh, i really don't know the the the, the components of the product but uh, from my understanding, it's more involved with the fiberglass with a less gypsum base. And uh, it's, it's, it's been on the market for a while, mm -hmm. but at least in this market, it's not very popular. From my understanding, in, in, in the north of the country where you have snow, basements, things like that, it's more common to see this type of product. It's more of a plaster. Yes. It's more of a plaster. So... Textures, I know that most people go in and they just blow a texture on the wall, but sometimes we have to do some pretty intricate hand textures. Are you yes. doing very many of them anymore? Well, not really, Alex. Actually, it's been the opposite. On the last, you know, 20 years ago, the, 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 the one we call a splatter drag, that's uh -huh. a, a heavy orange peel drag, it that was very popular. And then the, there was on all the custom homes, there was this uh, upgrade uh, that we call hand texture or skip trial. And it was very popular, very, very popular. But, but, for, but a, kind of a heavy, heavy, a heavy. Texture. Sometimes it was so heavy that you can tell you yeah. know, there was a very popular with a glaze finish with uh -huh. dark colors. You know, that was very popular for many years. But what we've been seeing on the last four or five years, all that texture is kind of disappearing, you know. Now is the opposite. Now it's more and more common to see projects with a smooth finish. Uh -huh. There's no texture. A light or no texture. No texture yeah. at all. The, the, in, in that category, we, we call two, two levels. The one is the level five sleek uh, museum finish. That's perfect. A museum finish. But sometimes could be, you know, pretty expensive depending on the budget. But uh, the level, the, the other level that's affordable and is smooth, we call a level for imperfect smooth finish. So an imperfect yeah, smooth Yeah, that means finish. it's smooth. You can still see in a few things, but the far as you paint it with a flat finish so or with a light you, color. So when you, so when you had, so how many times have they come back to you and they've said, Eduardo, I wanted 
a slick finish, but this is imperfect. And you go, but hey, yeah, but it's the level four imperfect finish. You, you, you had to present both the scenarios, <laughs> and uh, but now we is is weird because now we get him pay to float heavy texture to eliminate heavy textures. Uh huh. Now, float o- so you come over and float over it float instead over. of sand it all off. You float yeah. over it. Now, because I've noticed, of course, we all have in this business that it's interesting because in the in the old days when they used plaster, they didn't have a texture. They The plaster was a kind of a – it had what we called a stipple mm-hmm. finish. It was And it was essentially when they painted it, the paint roller left a real light stipple on it. And I called, always called that a stipple finish. But it was a slick wall for the most part on plaster. And then we went through the 70s, 80s, you know, whenever. When we started using sheetrock uh, as, as our, our total wall system, we started using sheetrock and we started using textures. And we went through this period in the 80s and 90s when, boy, we used some heavy texture. Yeah. And, heavy the, and the stuff. popcorn on the ceilings. The remember? popcorn on the ceilings. And the, but and now the everybody new, hates and those And people textures. would take their hands and put handprints on the wall. I mean, it was heavy yeah. stuff. And then we're back to that slick finish. But if they're not done properly, that slick finish looks bad. Yeah. I mean, always... Uh... In order to have a good drywall work, you have to have a really good frame. You know, if you don't have a good frame, a good quality product, studs or whatever, even if you're trying to do the best effort to have a good finish with the drywall, the frame, the drywall is so flexible that always is going to follow. It reflect any, it reflects what's behind it. Any imperfections yeah. on the frame, they're going right. to be more visible with the drywall. There are a few tricks in the industry we can use uh, a sack resistant drywall. That's made in half inch and five eighths. Sag resistant. Sag resistant drywall. That's recommended uh, for ceilings where your ceiling joists joists are 24, 24 inches or they're kind of uneven or they're older because it's a remodel. You can do two options. You can go with a sag resistant board or you can switch for five eighths because it's thicker, stronger, and mm-hmm. it's able to hide minor imperfections on the frame so if you're doing a new house yes and you have the option of doing five eighths inch sheetrock walls and ceilings if you want us uh ceilings for sure and walls if you want a really slick finish i mean you can have that option now if you're buying up a new house you're having one built you would go you would tell your builder I want slick walls, and I want a level five finish. And I want you to have your framer go through and straighten those walls, and they might look at you like you're crazy. Yeah, yeah they, they always look at you like you're, you don't know well, what you want to do. About. What those studs yeah. come the way those studs come, man. If they're crooked, they're crooked. But you know, back in, in when I was framing houses, we straightened them. We yeah. pulled those old crooked studs out of there and changed. I, I realize I'm I oh, digress, but on our part of our company, we're trying to check the walls mm-hmm. with our eight foot level trying to kind of find uh, major imperfections on the frame. Never is going to be perfect because it's wood, you know, right. wood framing. Metal studs is different, but uh, using the fight sets a good option. We're trying to recommend to go with 100% screws, and that way how many houses you walk every day and you see nail pops. Exactly. I mean, nail pops exactly. are always a very... I thought you were just... Your industry had gone totally to, to screws anyway. Yeah, yeah well... It's, it's depending on the market, depending uh-huh. the budget and everything. But the, we recommend the five eights and hundred percent screws, and uh, and that's you, really the only way you can get a level five slick wall yes. finish, right? Yes, pretty much. Yeah. Because the, with a hammer, when you nail in, you damage the you perimeter. It, right. Yeah. Right. The, the 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 paper get damaged a lot with a hammer. How do you remove? What is the best way to remove? And I get this question all the time. Popcorn ceiling. Well, uh, first of all, you had to do a great protection on masking because it's going to be a big mess. You had to spray uh, a little bit of water with those hand sprayers, you know, to kind of make the popcorn a little bit softer. And then you scrape it. You scrape it. Sometimes comes really easy. Sometimes it's popcorn that's been there for 30 or 40 years with two, three coats of paint. 
and it's almost impossible to remove you it. You almost have to scrape that. You, you down have and to reflow it. it. Mm -hmm. Yes, but in the normal situation, you scrape it off. That that those ceilings are on only one coat of tape and bed. You have to apply a second coat of tape and bed, a good primer, and then allow you to do a light texture. Uh -huh. That's is is very very popular lately on remodels to remove the popcorn. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to have popcorn. Nobody anymore. wants to wants it, but but nobody wants to pay. You know, and that's one of the first things I get is my husband can get rid of it. And I go, okay, oh, yeah. well, you've got my number. <laughs> yeah, you don't know how you don't know how often we get phone calls where the homeowner start the project, right? And on the middle of the project, they call you say, you know, my husband give up. I need your help. <laughs> my husband started it, and you're like, yeah, right. right. <laughs> We've got. I think I see one of those husbands on the other side of that glass over there. Okay, yeah. well, don't take this personally, JD. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, real quick, back to the phone because I'm going to run out of. I got so much stuff I want to talk about. And I know I'm kind of jumping around, but I, uh, one of the other things uh, talking about the foam and the inside of the wall that I always am concerned about when people do foam is making sure that the wall is properly sealed so that moisture cannot get in to that foam wall. Because if it does, if a wall's foamed, and I know I know production builders and apartment builders aren't using it, but there are a lot of people that are using foam in custom homes and, and higher end homes. If you get moisture inside there trapped in with that foam, you can have some serious problems. If you get moisture in the wall, no matter what. Kind well, of no matter what. Well, okay. 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 You know, yeah. I, I see where right. you're going, but um, the open cell foam, which is predominantly used for the thermal envelope, is um, it doesn't, the gravity will pull the water through it. Like, so if it's in sprayed to the roof deck and you get a roof leak, Gravity will pull it through, and you can find the leak and fix it in a wall. So, open cell foam <clears throat> is is got air bubbles in it, sort of. Correct. Um, it's it's a soft foam. Okay. Okay. So if you get a leak in a wall, and you find the leak, you're going to have to remove the insulation, whatever kind it is. That's true. Okay. It, the foam. The fiberglass, they're both inorganic materials. They're not going to support mold, but everything around it is. So, like the OSB, the sheathing, the studs, the drywall, the paper, the, on dry, the, drywall. the paper on the drywall supports the well. Feed is the mold, feeds the mold, mm -hmm. the food for the mold. Exactly right, and the insulation is not right. Right. So I, I understand what you're saying. You want to make sure that you want to make sure that. But they'll, they'll walls leak. Like a, a a batted insulation wall will leak a little bit n normally. It's not unusual that I see. And you're right; they'll have a little rot spot in them, but they'll dry out. But a foam wall gets water in it, and it's like a I don't know. It seems like it traps it worse, and it just does. And so we always want to make sure. That if we're using foam, whether it's the the roof or the walls, wherever it is, that we've gone through and made sure that that wall is totally sealed. We've checked every nail hole, every crack, every pipe coming through it, everything to make sure that everything's wrapped up and water can't leak through it. Correct. And that that's that ends up what that ends up doing, of course, is making it that much tighter anyway, which is the whole idea of using foam. Well, foam is a rated air barrier. Right. Where right. all the other conventional insulations are not. So when there's air movement in that wall, it diminishes the R value of that product. But is now bad insulation or you know, our normal insulation we're used to um, needs air in it. Or if you blow insulation into an attic, into your rafters, the air moving through it is kind of what helps it work. Right. Well, the fiberglass in the wall, the bat, the way the, the uh, fibers are woven, it, it traps air. It doesn't need air 
coming in for it to work. It already has but it, it there. traps it. it okay. Yeah, it, it's already in the bat. Like when you open the bag, it's compressed and they just spring open to, right, to full right. three and a half or five and a half inches. And then it has the air in it. You do not want air infiltration in that wall. Wow. You know, how could this how could you get this much time talking about insulation and sheetrock? It is it's amazing. Yeah, now keep in mind with the new energy codes. They're right, getting, getting right. pretty tough, you know, besides the R values and all that. They're doing this back system test. Right. They even, uh, we got a call the other day with an inspector walking the house with a heat gun. A Check heat gun? Heat gun, just to get measurements on uh, areas that we probably mess or the insulation contractor mess. And they make you, you know, do a... She the, the, was this the, was, so this was after it was sheetrocked. He yeah. had a heat gun. Trying trying to get the CO inspection. Uh, I saw that three weeks ago. Um, uh, I was pretty fortunate that we was not the insulation contractor. Or somebody <laughs> else. But this guy make uh, the GC remove the drywall and three uh, exterior walls and a brand new. All of know, it. Yeah, the whole wall. So just to uh, get the right insulation the right i mean it's crazy it's oh, oh you gosh. just got to do it right do it right since the beginning well and uh, and the hard part is knowing what the expectations are often i mean it's just that you don't always know yeah and uh, i know i know from my perspective sometimes i get in there and i think i've done everything right and then i meet up with the inspector from my nightmares and he's like oh i just found an i just found another page in chapter 36 of the inspector manual it's in small print but i found it yeah <laughs> and i'm gonna make you live by it okay i get it i get it we're gonna take a short break and when we come back we're gonna talk more insulation more sheetrock and all kinds of good things you're listening to Your Home with Alex Guthrie. Don't go away. We will be right back. So every time you look out your windows, the world looks a little foggy. Does it sound like the crickets are in the house? You need to keep the outside out and the inside in. Alex Guthrie here for my friends, Window Traditions, where I buy Sierra Pacific windows. You want a fully transferable glass warranty? Sierra Pacific windows has it. You want the highest quality sun protection? Sierra Pacific windows offers it. Family owned for four generations, Sierra Pacific windows is here to stay. And not just anybody gets my business when it comes to windows and doors. That's why I call Window Traditions for sales and installation. 214-357-3100. That's 214-357-3100. Sierra Pacific Windows and Window Traditions. 214-357-3100. Or visit their website at wtraditions.com for the very best view of the Lone Star State. 11.60 a.m. KBDT proudly presents this historic salute to Grapevine, Texas. Brought to you by Grapevine Power Sports. In 1889, the J.E. Faust store opens on Main Street. It's now Grapevine's oldest remaining brick building. Eggs sell for 10 cents per dozen. Butter is 20 cents per pound. And chickens are two fifty a dozen. I'm Aaron McWhorter with Grapevine Power Sports. When I bought the dealership, I came in to buy a four-wheeler. They were a freestanding Kawasaki dealership. And I said, Dennis, I don't mean to pry. Are you interested in selling this place? And he said, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but we're fixing to put it on the market. And I said, Dennis, I'll take it. In the last three years, we've done 60% increase. The mayor is a customer of mine. The city manager is a customer of mine. A lot of friends that live here still. The small town feel right in the middle of the big metroplex. Grapevine, Texas, a world festival and event city. Find out more about Grapevine by going to www.grapevinetexas.gov. Step back in time. Visit historic Grapevine, Texas today. When I say Italy, what comes to mind? Venice. 
Capri, oh my gosh, Capri was marvelous. The views, the cliffside views, or traveling to Sorrento. Pirello Tours. Oh, Pirello Tours, for sure. Pirello. Hi, I'm Steve Pirello of Pirello Tours. With over 70 years of tour experience to Italy, it's no wonder Pirello Tours is synonymous with travel to Italy. I think of the culture. And to walk up to certain areas and touch a wall and think, well, this wall's like 3,000 years old. Being on a Pirello Tour on our anniversary was better than anything I can remember ever on an anniversary. I personally approve every itinerary to ensure a stress-free, once-in-a-lifetime vacation. Salute! Call now for your free insider's guide to Perillo's Italy. Call in the next 30 minutes and qualify for a $100 gift card when you travel with us. Call 800-547-6018. 800-547-6018. Welcome back to Your Home with Alex Guthrie. We're talking studs with the studs. Eduardo Padilla. <laughs> How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Thank you, Alex. You having a good time? Yeah, I'm having a great time. During the break, I've asked you if you ever do metal studs in houses. Have you ever done metal studs in houses? We've been doing metal studs in homes. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years, and I've been seeing probably four homes with metal studs only. I'm surprised it hasn't yeah. taken off I better. Mean, I mean, it's, it's not often. Uh-huh. You know, I, I saw in the past couple production builders trying to do like a pre-panels, you uh-huh. know, like a complete walls made with the lightweight uh, studs. But, uh, uh, I mean, with all the crazy pricing of metal, you never, you, know, you probably never know. You never know. Yeah, well, especially now. Who knows? Who knows yeah, what it's going to be? On commercial, is still, you know, 95% of the commercial jobs are always metal studs. But on residential, I think it's 99.9 uh, wood studs. So when I um, go into a house and I've been in, because I do a lot of elevators. I do a lot of custom elevators. You've, you've done some of them with me. And uh, more and more of them are in new homes that we build, or not that I build, that other people build, and they hire us to come in and do these custom elevators. And um, less and less of these homes have real quality walls. <laughs> I mean, I... I don't mean to be mean about it, but it's just how it is. And it doesn't matter, seem to matter what they cost. Now, there's obviously, I'm talking about production type homes. I'm not talking about these custom homes that these, the, a custom builder, like the ones in our tour coming up, they're really, really nice. Uh, you don't have to worry about those guys, but these production guys, they're slamming them up pretty quick. And, um, I'm, I'm, I am, continually amazed at what the the lack of I don't know if it's a lack of supervision but what I'm seeing and the lack of quality in these things what should someone look for a home buyer look for from your perspective and then I'm going to ask you the same thing from your for yours for insulation because a lot of people when they're buying homes they're they're spending the average price for a house in this country right now is $254,000. That's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And so if you're going to invest that kind of money, you're going to kind of track it as you go. I know a lot of people do. They're making a deal, with it, whether it's a production builder or whoever it is. I'm buying this house. They're building it for them, and they're going to walk in that house as it's being done, as they should do. Well, well let me start, with, let me start with, with Duffy. What should they look for in the insulation part? What are they looking for? If I'm a homeowner, what can I see that that maybe I see something and I want to tell the superintendent of that production builder, hey, I'd like for you to check A, B, or C out? Okay, if it's um, been insulated with fiberglass bats, let's say, then they can visually walk through the house after it's been insulated and if the insulation looked like it's been wadded up and pushed in the wall, that's no good. You can't have any compressions or voids. That'll allow. So you want it sort of. You want it. You want to be. It needs to be flat. 
Yeah, they call that a grade one install is basically what that is. Um, if it doesn't look pretty, then it's not installed right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's... But I, 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 we, I've seen that a lot, and, you know, that's a guy that doesn't really know how... That's when the carpenter tries to insulate, you know? On a remodel, on a small job. Right, and he'll just like stuff that. it in there because he doesn't know the difference. Exactly. Yeah. Now, we do have the uh, inspectors that are going to be looking at that, and, you know, if the homeowner gets in there after the inspection and sees things like that, mm-hmm. then they need to bring that to the attention of the builder. And from your perspective, Eduardo, on this, so is that is that kind of, you want to look at that and then? Right, and if it's foam insulation, it's the depth, okay, because it's self-sealing. It doesn't have to look pretty because it is the uh, air barrier also. And, um, you know, our value is related to inches. So you want to make sure that you have the, Cavity, basically. Real quick, how do people get hold of you? 214-799-3780. Duffy, quality insulation. Quality insulation. Thank and you. a quality guy. Thank you, sir. <laughs> an Thank old you, friend Alex. of mine. And what do people look for from the sheetrock, real quick? Well, you have always to check the thickness of the drywall on uh, for code on garage and any spaces under the stairs. You have to use five eighths fire rated. The, the one is called XP. The rest of the house could be half inch. It's really no big difference if you want to go nails, screws, but the more important is the, the materials for bathrooms, showers, make sure it's the proper materials. How do people get in touch with you, sir? Oh, well, they can call me to the phone number 972 979 7393, and they can always watch our work on, on our pages on their Plain and Turnkey Solutions. On, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Duffy Frazier, Eduardo Padilla, Richard Miller. Thank you, Mr. John David Wells, for operating the board. Thank you to my crack research team, Mrs. Guthrie. Thank you to all our sponsors. Thank you to our listeners. Check out our Facebook, Your Home with Alex Guthrie. Check out our website, yourhomeshow.net. Send in your questions check out next week's show have a great week until next time this is alex guthrie signing off news talk weather sports this is 1160 a.m kbdt highland park dallas fort